Now let's just check some scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26. And I'm so sharing the message, worth transfer. God is transferring worth to the church. All right, worth transfer. Financial revival. Somebody say financial revival. Financial revival. We have how many revivals? One. Word revival. And second, prayer revival. Then we have ministry revival. Then we have worship revival. Then we have financial revival. All right, let's see from the scriptures, from the Bible. I love this. Read together. One, two, three, go. Read. For God gives wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge and joy to a man who is good in his sight. But to the sinner, he gives the work of gathering and collecting that he may give to him who is good before God. This also is a vanity and a grasping for the wind. I have a problem here. I'm trying not to find a question, you know, ask a question, who you are or who your neighbor is. The Bible says, God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to he that is good before his sight. But to a sinner, he gathers, puts things together so that someone can collect. Now, I'm suspecting your neighbor right now. (laughs) I'm suspecting your neighbor right now. Some people are working day and night for some good banks to correct. I'm just trying to suspect your neighbor. Oh, major one I'm talking about. You see, the Bible is saying God gives knowledge, wisdom, and what? How many things over there? Now, quickly, just give me in the message translation. In message translation, the Bible says, God give what? Wisdom and knowledge and joy to his what? Favorites. But sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Nothing but smoke and splitting into the wind. Now, this is the moment I want to talk to you to say the Bible says, sinners gathers so that God's children can correct. Now, I just, I, just, I just told you that right now, and I don't know who you are. Who are you? Who are you? You see, if you are in the business of hard working, hard labor, yet you can't enjoy, then I need to correct this mistake tonight. Because you are not a sinner. I can promise you that. Say, I'm not a sinner. Say, I'm righteous. Say, I am holy. You're not. The Bible says, God gives, not prosperity, not money, but he gives wisdom. He gives knowledge. And he gives joy. But he, that is a sinner, he gathers so that the favorites. How many here are favorites? (laughs) Can I say God's favorites? Oh. <laughs> Overflow the dome. You there, right? The Bible says so that the, the favorites can pick the things. 
gather together by by sinners. We're going to come back to that scripture just shortly. We are not yet there, so I don't want to confuse you. Little, you know. So, the Bible here says, God gives. We may have you, uh, some of you here in the church who you are not right before the Lord. And you're praying day and night for money. God will give you money. He'll give you, he'll give his children, those standing right in his sight. You see, we're not just preaching the gospel. Oh, everybody who is here, it's time for wealth transfer. It's living sinners is coming to you. Why if you too are a sinner? It's living news coming to the righteous. <laughs> who are your neighbors? We're not just preaching. Huh? Oh, hallelujah. God is remembering the church. No, you got something to do. You better stand right before the Lord. You better stand right before the Lord. This is the biggest problem we have. We have people who don't know the meaning of standing right before God. How many here are righteous? How many? I want, I want to see your hand up. How many are sinners? <laughs> do you think well well do, do you think Jesus will come and say you're a sinner go to hell he won't do that he'll just stand like this and look at you yourself will be like uh-uh I'm not worth it that's the meaning of God's holiness. When we say God is holy, we don't mean that he, he will say, no, I'm holy. No, you just look at his holiness and say, I think me. I, I think, no. <laughs> he will not say a word. He will just look you. Slick at you. And you will begin to remember everything yourself. Without anyone reminding you anything. Tell your number next to you. Say, get things right. Say, you have an opportunity. Now, I didn't hear you. Tell your number, get things right. Tell them again, get things right. If you want worth transfer, stop being wicked. This is not for the wicked. It's for God's children. I don't know why. I don't know why. Nothing is coming. I've been praying. Sometimes just stand and begin to look at your ways. Just check your words and say, where am I wrong? Where am I wrong? Because we are dealing here with God's blessings. Now, I wrote in my book, I've been praying the whole week using that book, Mystery Surrounding Your Money. How many of you know the book? All right? In that book, I wrote everything. And I mean everything about money. Because most Christians don't know the meaning of money. I was talking to some of my sons and daughters yesterday. I said, you see, people don't know what is money. That's the biggest problem we have. The problem is, wicked people out there, they know money. And you know nothing about money. The fact that you went to school, you did accounting, you are chartered or you are whatever you call yourself, or you, are, you, are, you did uh, doctorates in management, in financing, that does not mean you know money. To manage something, you can manage a football club, but you don't know how to play it.
That's the problem we have. You don't know money. Do you, do you know what is money? You see, that's what they tell you. They tell you money is a medium of exchange. But that's not that. Unfortunately, the real people know what is money. The world knows. You see, the, the world knows what is money. And they are, you see, able to manipulate it to their direction. And the Christians are failing to manipulate money to their direction. I asked the question to, to some people yesterday. I said, according to you, what is money? Oh, it's a medium of exchange. It's a medium of, I said, no, it's not a medium of exchange. <laughs> it's not. In fact, there's nothing like my money. It's not your money. Oh, let me teach you something. Just give me that small paper of money. All right? Let me make this teaching. It's very important. As a church, sometimes men of God have, can I have any money, anybody with money? I know, it, it won't be mine. I promise I'll give you back. <laughs> You see, this is money, right? How much is this money? 200. You see, when you ask somebody, what is money? They'll be like, money is a paper that is used to buy and selling things. Or money is a medium of exchange. All right? But that's not the meaning of money. And I, as a leader of this church, I am, it's my obligation to teach you as my church. We are about to prophesy to money tonight. Now watch this. Watch this. So money is not this piece of paper. One can make a, a piece of this of paper. It will be called a fake. Because it doesn't have a sense of ownership. And there is no money like my money. You have no money. Nobody owns money. Money is owned by the Reserve Bank. You didn't hear that, right? So I was saying yesterday, I said, this money, this money, this money, the power of this money, it is what is in the Reserve Bank of the country. Did you hear that, right? The power of the money is what is in the reserve bank of the country. So what is in the reserve is leveraging the power of this paper. For example, I'll just give an example. For example, if in the reserve bank there is one billion, the worth of what is in the reserve bank, the materials, the gold, what's the oil, the, all the things... If it's worth one billion dollars, just for example, the money printed by the Reserve Bank must be equivalent to what is in the reserve. So if the, the, the Reserve Bank keeps, for example, one billion worth of gold, worth of oil, worth of all those, that's what is called reserve. The meaning of reserve, it is, some, it is having something in reserve. To revelage what you have in your pocket. Now, just for example, just for example, for example, if, if the reserve has got one billion worth, it means what it must print out is worth what is in the reserve. Now, if the reserve has used some things, for example, oil, gold, and other things, it means it's no longer one billion. For example, they've used about 500 million. It means what, how much is in the reserve? 500 million. But the money that has been printed out is what? 1 billion. So what's going to happen? They will reduce that money by half. The strength of that money by half. In order to balance what is in the reserve. That's why you have got money what? Money doing what? Huh? So you've got money. You'll be like, the money has lost value. 
Oh, we are, now on exchange is one to this number. Now it's all, oh, it has gained. Why it has gained? Because some few things have gone back into the reserve. Giving back the currency, the money, you have power. Now, when you hold it, according to you, it's just money in your hand. But you don't know the mystery behind it. Oh, did you hear that? That's why it's not your money. It may be in your account. But any mistake you do with it, the Reserve Bank will come after you. You'll be like, they'll come after you with your own money. They'll be like, it's my money. They'll be like, no, 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 no. No. We have questions against you. Because according to them, it's not your money. So what must you do then as a Christian to have your own money? So you need to create money from money by having something out of the money that you can leverage against. Now you didn't hear just said right now. And I was saying yesterday, do you know you can have 50 billion in your account and one can have 50,000 in his account yet the richest between the two of you could be the one with the 50,000. Because the one with the 50,000 how rich you are is not how much you have in your account. How rich you are is how much worth you are in assets. It's not the liquidity. It is how much rich you are in what? In assets. Because you have got, you may have no money in your account, but in assets you are rich. In other words, you have got some things. You have got assets. The same way the reserve bank have got assets in the reserve bank to revelage the money. You too, you have got money in what? Assets to revelage the what? The money. So you can actually go there and look at one of your property and say, um, uh, with someone to go there and say, how much is this worth? It'd be like, uh, it's actually 15 million. Yet you don't have money in your, in your, in your, in your, in your account, in your hands, so you are able to revelage a property. Yeah. Australia, are you there? <laughs> All right. Now, Look at your neighbor. Say, I'm here. I'm here. Now, you see Christians, okay? So, you don't know money. Or according to you, it's a paper. That's why when a person gives you some money, all you do is to hold it in your hands and use it. Quickly. And use it. And use it. And spend it. Poor people save money. Rich people invest money. Uh, you don't hear just say right now. <laughs> nah, the Bible says go and subdue. Subdue nations. How would you subdue? That's what the Bible says to his favorites. He gives them knowledge. Knowledge to know what is money. You must have knowledge. It takes the knowledge of God and his wisdom for you to understand what's going on in the world. Poor people are paid for the time they have worked for. Rich people are paid for the results they have produced. It doesn't matter. You meet a rich guy, you want him to, to do something for you, it doesn't matter whether he did it in 10 minutes. <laughs> as long as what you wanted has given you the results. Well, poor people, they must work from 6 in the morning to six, if you don't work for two hours, they'll be like, eh, come, come, come here, sign here, now, sign, sign. Well, rich people, they don't have to sign anyway. 
I'll be like, what you want are results, right? Yes. Okay. You want results by when? Okay, I want results of this project by next week. Okay, by next week, yeah. So the guy can work all night and they finish and have all six days just sleeping and moving around. He will be paid for results. Not for what? Not for the time. Why well, I should start thinking? I need to have something. My own company that I can actually be paid by my company for the results. You're working from different companies. We thank God for the work you're working. But have something aside that they must pay you for the what? For the results. So money is not what you have in your hands. It is what is revelaging it. So it is very important for you to also produce something from the money that you must revelage it against the same money. You didn't hear what I just said. So in any amount you have, think of, you see, otherwise, I don't want this in our church where money is ruling you. You must rule over money. If I want to teach you this, all oh, this season is useless. All oh, this period where God is doing, you see, giving back money to the church is useless. Because I will release the prayer to you, you will receive money, but you want to know how to use it. And you'll be like, I don't know what happens to me. I touch money, it disappears from my hands. I can't even point to what I have done. Hallelujah. What are you talking about? Some of us, 10,000 can change our story. I'm telling you the truth. Some of us, 20,000 can change the whole story. But the problem is you don't know what is money. So when you hold it in your hands, all you think is, is as they deceived you, a medium of exchange. So the only thing you think when it's in your hands I must exchange. I must make a payment. I must buy something. I must do that. I must do that. Wait. Relax. You must be righteous because God says he gives knowledge and wisdom to what? So what God is giving you now is what? It's wisdom and what? I'm telling you, what God is giving you right now is knowledge and wisdom. Oh, I receive, I receive money. Oh, I receive, Papa, I want, I want financial breakthrough. <laughs> okay, God gives you. Before we know it. Where you are, you are thinking there'll be like one million that will come to you first for you to be rich. You don't need that. All you need is knowledge over money. Yeah. Knowledge. Knowledge over money. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, knowledge over money. Knowledge. Say that again, knowledge over money. Knowledge. That's why they say we will make money because money can be made. Otherwise, you'll be praying in church every single day Believing God for financial breakthrough and they want to be breakthrough because you see, you need to work it out. That's why Jesus said he gave a parable of two people. One who took the money and hid it. And what? And saved it. And one took the money and what? Invested. And Jesus said the one who saved, the master would take it out from him and give the one who is investing. I 
I was saying to some few people, I think on Saturday, I said, you see, we have got so many educated people in the church. And education, some people say, it is the end of foolishness. But trust you me, we have so many educated fools.